Hello everybody, my name is Adegu to you, and welcome back to Let's Play Spire the Dragon. In the previous video, we defeated the Lofty Castle. We defeated the actual tower, or we defeated the actual castle itself, not that we didn't actually beat the level. We beat the, the, the tower. I might intro to not making sense, but anyway, welcome back to Let's Play Spire the Dragon. In the previous video, we conquered the Lofty Castle, and today we're going to be conquering the Haunted Towers. This is my favorite level in this entire game, because it has a really, really fun gameplay mechanic. Um, that will be demonstrating over the course of the level because it's going to be in the game flavor of the level. That was a really well constructed sentence, if I do say so myself. Obvious sarcasm is obvious. Um, this level, um, what I really like about it, first of all, I want to point out this really cool detail over here, how um, the enemy is like chasing the fairy, but we can destroy the fairy. Not not destroy the fairy, we can destroy the enemy. Bleh, I can't talk right now. Uh, we can destroy the enemy, um, and uh, and we can rescue the fairy, and now we have ultimate fire power for a limited time. <laughs> Get it? Because he's he's a dragon and he breathes fire, so it's fire power. My puns are stupid. I apologize. <laughs> so anyway, uh, we're gonna be conquering the Haunted Towers. This is my favorite level in the game. Um, those knights over there, um, they cannot be defeated by either your fire or your uh, charred attack, but they can be defeated with super fire. But you have to remember the the fire, the, the superpower, the, the super fire power thing, but jigger. Um, it has like limited time on it, so I have to go back over to the fairy to um, get the, to get the power, um, and then uh, track down the knights uh, and defeat it before your fire power runs out. Um, this is a pretty cool level. I really like it. Um, it's a big reason why this is my favorite level in the game. Um, but not only that, but the music in this area is also pretty decent as well. Um, it's not like off the castle good, but. Um, it's still a pretty decent level, and I just died. And there's a sun on the bottom of the world. That doesn't usually happen. And I have to fight the bad guys too. Don't throw grenades at my face while I'm trying to talk. You can do that after I'm done talking. <laughs> uh, no you can't. That'd be very bad. Um, so yeah, um, you have to defeat the knights, the knights uh, throughout this world, um, with the super awesome power of unlimited firepower. Um, so... That's, basi that's basically it. And there's a war run right here, which we can use to get over to the next area. Now this knight, now this, uh, um, these uh, armor, I just realized I forgot, did I? I don't think I did. Um, I'll go check it anyway, but basically the pile of um, armor um, whenever there's like a wizard nearby, um, they will um, bring the they'll bring the suits of armor to life. Um, so you have to destroy those as well. Um, that the first armor in the second area in this level, we can't actually do anything about it until um, later in the level. Um, we probably could if we're fast enough, but I am not fast enough to do that. Um, so uh, yeah, it's, we're gonna have to wait on that one. But we can't. What's unusual is that we can we can destroy um, all the other um, armor. Um, night armor things um, with the with the limited range. That we, it's going to make sense in a minute, but basically this is the only um, pile of armor that we cannot destroy um, until like until way later in the level. Now, one thing about this level is that there's something kind of, um, there's something that happens later in this level um, that makes it so that you can actually wait to defeat all these knights until um, like the very end of the level. Um, because there's something that because there's something that happens towards the end of it, um, where you'll get where you'll have the ability to destroy the knights without having to um, go near a fairy or anything like that. I'm probably not going to be doing that because I still want to saw off the fairies, um, the fairy power, um, even though we already know what it does. But uh, whatever. Um, the next fairy is over here, so let's go over there and get unlimited fire power for a short time. Uh, that's, right. that's gonna be like a do thing for this let's play where I'll be where I'll, that I can do catchphrase or whatever. I hope it doesn't because I know that took would get old super quickly. Okay, I'm um, I'm gonna wait to get the rest of the knights over there um, until later in the level. Um, once we have that super awesome power, they'll they'll show off later. Hey Spyro, all dragons know there's magic in a fairy's kiss. See what it can do to your power of flame. Dude, this isn't the first level where this appeared, and you're, and you're just now explaining um, the super awesome power of Fairy Kiss. 
That's, that's, it is just weird. They would have been a lot more useful if he showed up um, in like the, I think it was the high caves where they first appeared. Uh, but still, he, that would have been a lot more useful if that dragon appeared there rather than here. But anyway, um, there's some more gems over, around this castle that we can go rescue. Um, the unusual thing is that, well it's not really unusual, but when I first played through this game, I, I had the mindset that there was something on top of this castle, because throughout the rest of this entire game, um, there, it was like the common thing for, um, for, for you to be able to go to areas that you wouldn't think you'd be able to explore. Well, I thought that we'd ha we can get on top of this palace right here because uh, um, it's an area that you wouldn't th really think you'd be able to get to. But that is not the case at all. We can't do anything about that castle. We can't get to the top of it no matter what we do. I don't even think you can... I don't really think there's anything up there anyway if you try hacking the game, but... Um, yes, yeah, it's, it's so rude of them to do that. Curse you, game designers. Whenever I do that, where I like, um, where I like, where I'm like, uh, curse you, game designers, or um, whatever it is um, that I'm that I'm jokingly cursing, um, I always like legitimately stick my fist in the air, um, um, like, um, or something like that. Next thing we can do is that we can get to the top of this castle using the war wind to climb up the stairs, but because the stairs are too big, we have to jump on it, and I just fell. I fell down the stairs, literally. <laughs> That was a dumb joke. That platform we saw off the distance, uh, we're not going to be able to go over there for a little while. Um, well, actually we can get there right now, but, um, but I'm just going to be doing that later once we get the other gems in this area. And this area right here, this is one of the more compli- uh, one of the most- uh, It's not really the most complex, um, that ward, um, that goes to the treetops uh, for having the most complex uh, supercharged jump. Um, but this one is probably the more difficult one because um, most of the time you can actually you cannot actually see where it is you're going, and you have to be very careful about um, about where you're jumping beforehand. Um, don't worry about trying to use a supercharge to get through those doors at least for now, um, because there's a fairy that'll give us the power to destroy those in a minute. Hold your horns! Here comes Spyro. Patience, little one. You'll soon have the opportunity to battle the one who matters most. Nasty Nork. Spire the Dragon was talking about himself in the person. Lady Geared You does not like it when people do that. <laughs> uh, that's weird. Um, whenever I, whenever I like watch a movie when um, somebody talks about themselves in the third person, like on, like for example, How About Your Mother, whenever Barney, um, like talks about himself in the third person. Um, I'm always uh, like, um, that person's talking about the third person, and it's just something I like to do. Um, so whenever, so when Spyro was all like, here comes Spyro! Um, that's what that made me think of. But anyway, we can now use the, uh, the, we can now use the fairy to, uh, destroy those crates, but we are going to be needing to use a supercharge, um, to get through those, uh, to get through those areas anyway, but it's probably a better idea to knock them down before you do that. Um, there's one more... Uh, chairs or chest that we can destroy. Um, hopefully I can do that before before our power runs up. Come on, 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 um, because um, there's a three day a three day limit, but the thing is with that game, that time limit doesn't actually really matter that much because you have a song that resets the time limit, um, and it gives you more than enough time to, um, and the time limit in that game gives you like more than enough time to, um, what is that I'm trying to say? The game gives you more than enough time to do everything you'd want to do um, in a time cycle um, within a day, like complete a dungeon or complete a side quest or anything like that. Um, so, I guess I can understand why some people didn't like that. Um, like, I, I do understand how people didn't like that when combining that with the game's, uh, save system. Um, but the time limit in that game actually made that game more fun for me because, um, because you felt the pressure of having to complete it within a certain time. Like, okay, I only have this much time to complete this dungeon. Um, so, that's, that's, uh, something that always stuck with me whenever I played through that game. Um, the... There was like that added sense of thrill and exhilaration of uh, trying to beat the boss of a dungeon, 
um, within the, like the, within like the five minutes that you have left to beat the level. Um, so I always really loved um, that about Majora's Mask, and I actually really do hope that they make another Zelda game with the time limit, like not the an entire game like that, but like have some sort like some form of a time limit within the Zelda game. Um, hopefully they don't. I actually don't really think they will do that with Zelda U, and I and a part of me doesn't want them to. Um, because uh, um, I just know that with a huge word like that, if you only had like half an hour to get from one er run part of the map to the other half, and if the word really is as big as I say, um, that game would be so difficult. And it would really be annoying to have to go all across the world uh, to um, search for something and then you run out of time, um, and then you have to go back and then you have to start all over again. That's actually a big reason why I'm not that. Well, I, I do love a drug, I do love Wind Waker, um, but there's this one part where. Um, it's a side quest, so it's not like it's absolutely essential to the story. But there's this part in Wind Waker where you have to um, get these empty bottles and use uh, and use uh, magic water or something um, to restore to save these uh, tree sprouts that need to be that need to grow for a side quest. That's one thing that I kind of don't really look forward to that much whenever I play Wind Waker. Um, but other than that, Wind Waker is a really fun game. That'd probably uh, be my fourth favorite Zelda game. Um, Link's Awakening is number one. Majora's Mask is a very close number two. Um, and Scar Sword would be number three. Wind Waker would be number four. And so on and so forth. Okay, we got this area. And this is the area that I could not find for the longest time. Um, but um, the gameplay mechanic we'll see in this area is the reason this is my favorite level in the game. Before I go over that, let's talk to the dragon. You've become a master of the supercharge. Great work. Again, that would have been more useful. Well, there was a guy who kind of. Okay, never mind. I was about to say that that would have been a lot more amusing um, if it was in treetops, but there actually was something like that in the treetops, and it was a lot funnier when because Spyro was all like, "It would have, it would have been awesome if you were in an easier place to get stuck or something." Like that. This area right here is is a tricky part. Let's hope we do this right. Oh, it was just barely too slow. Ah, okay. Um, it's not that big of a deal if you miss, um, because um, you can just go back over here to like the little corner in this room and just start over. This might take me a few tries, but hopefully I'll be able to do this over a live commentary because that would be awesome. It probably won't happen because of the Let's Play curse. Curse you, Let's Play curse. <laughs> well, I was way off that time. Yes, we did it! Yeah, we defeated the mile. And now we can go inside here, and there's a special fairy that, if memory serves correctly, only appears in this level. So, let's talk to the fairy. And now we have unlimited firepower. And not just unlimited firepower; it is unlimited firepower. There's no time limit. We are like this throughout the rest of the level. This is what I meant earlier when I said that we could actually ignore all of those night enemies um, and we would be okay. Now you're not invincible by enemies when you're in this form. You can't still die from getting attacked by enemies and you can't still die from falling off ledges. Um, but this lets you to be this gives you the ability to destroy the knights without having to like kiss a fairy because um, that one fairy is apparently like so awesome that, um, that it, you only have to kiss the fairy once to Get unlimited firepower. So yeah, that's basically it. Um, we have unlimited firepower. Um, um, and like I also said, you could you could also like completely avoid the enemies um, until you get this form um, because of, because I might actually I might I actually do recommend doing them to wait until you have, until you have this ability before you do anything. Now it might make it a little bit harder um, to. I might make it a little bit harder to progress to the level, but I do recommend that because I do recommend doing that because it makes you feel like, oh, unnecessary epic and things like that. Let's destroy the next couple of knights. And the last ones are over here, I think. Let's hope I'm right. I think I am right. And I am way off for the second time in the, in the let's play. And I have to track those for 
Okay, again, the music changed mid-level. This is not the song. This is not the song the user plays in this level. This is a different song. Okay, that's very. That's very weird that the game is doing that. I don't know if it's glitching or anything, or if this is something that I just never really noticed while playing through the game normally. Um, but um, hopefully it doesn't keep doing this because um, I did. I, because I did like this song, like this song and Lofty Castle are my two favorite songs in this game. Um, but still, hopefully it doesn't keep doing that because that would be very weird. Okay, after a few minutes of searching around, I found that there was a treasure chest that I completely forgot to get. I think these are the last of gems. I am hopefully right. Let's hope I am right. I think I am right. Hopefully. Maybe. Maybe. Yes! We got all the gems! I'm just gonna double check that I got all the dragons, dragons as well. Yes, we did. So now we can leave this world. It kind of makes me sad because this is my favorite world in the game. Um, I do love the gameplay mechanic and like just the general atmosphere of this level. Um, this is really a highlight for me whenever I play through the game. But now we have to leave it forever. Goodbye. So, on that note, we're gonna end this video off here, so, thank you guys so much for watching this video of Spyro the Dragon! In the next episode, we're gonna be conquering the last war of this area before we move on to the fight to the next boss fight. Um, the boss fight will be its own separate video, as usual, but, in the next video, we'll be going to... The Dark Passage! And until next time, we'll gear to you! Oh yeah!